Hallelujah. Come on, I say hallelujah. I want us to turn our Bible with me to the book of Romans, chapter 4. Let's see how far we can go in this fresh teaching. Mr. Olivia, you know, as you walked in this after this evening, I began to remember something. The day I called you and I said, the Holy Ghost said, or oh, I feel in my spirit that you should start coming to evening service like this. Remember that day? And I wanted to ask you, does it worth it? <laughs> Romans chapter 4. You know, the, because the reason why I do that is that I don't like people I always want to let people know why and trace those things because it's very easy for us to get to religion <laughs> and we don't want to do that Romans chapter 4 Spirit of God again speak to us the language you will understand give you all the glory we open our heart unto you to receive your word into our spirit we give you thanks in Jesus name we pray Romans chapter 4 today we're going to do readings as of the word so as we can learn from the scripture by the scriptures amen let's read from verse 11 and he received the sign of circumcision a seed of righteousness of faith which he had while still uncircumcised that he might be the father of all those who believe though they are uncircumcised that righteousness might be imputed to them also and the father of circumcision to those who not only are of the circumcision but who also walk in the steps of the faith which our father Abraham had while still uncircumcised. He said, and the faith of circumcision to those who not only are of the circumcision but who also walk in the steps of the faith which our father Abraham had why still uncircumcised today i'm going to be speaking on the subject of faith walking in the steps of abrahamic faith walking in the steps of abrahamic faith i've said it before that um, when we talk about grace men and need us to understand that once it is grace it is not of works any longer how many of us believe that story how many of us believe that it is of work it is of grace and not of works how many of us believe that now and because of that people thought there is nothing under the sun you need to do again now the truth is this our salvation is what is of faith or what is of grace and not of works in other words, for you to be born again, you have absolutely nothing to do about it. Okay? It is of what? Of grace we are saved through faith. So the message of faith and the message of grace, we need to understand it properly. But now, one aspect I'm bringing our attention to is that our salvation of aim is what is of faith, not of works. But now, that grace we talk about that comes through faith has a system at with which it works. One is what this scripture is telling us that there are steps of faith. There are works of faith. I think 1st Thessalonians or 2nd Thessalonians talks specifically about the work of faith. So I wouldn't say because I've been born again now, I will do nothing again. 
us receiving is a work on his own how many of us believe what i'm talking about that receiving is a system i don't do anything for god to release prophecy and release promises for me what he's saying here is this the promise that comes is by faith one the giving of the promises and receiving of the promises is of grace you don't need to do anything for god to promise you about what he's going to do but receiving that promise now there are systems at which it works so let's go back to this story the story of abraham that when god gave him the promise of the son he did nothing about it because what this place is telling us is that sincerely he received the promise before he was circumcised hello how many of us believe what i'm talking about you are you casting your mind back he, when god promised him isaac he had not become abraham he received that promise when he was abraham can i have a witness there had not been any circumcision as at that time it was after god promised him that god said that for you to understand i'm going to bring this promise to reality and for you to know how committed i am we need to enter into agreement and that is covenant okay so it was he received it that means that receiving the promise of god upon our life in the prerogative of god come god comes to us gives us promises that ensures the prophecy that is ahead of us prophecy is what unfolds what god has had a mind to do for you before you were born that was that is prophecy it unfolds to you it's just as good as when uh maybe an fbi maybe fbi agent is sent to maybe france immediately is getting there as a as an angel what is the force they're going to give to him they're going to give him the fight that contain what he must come to do because he's here do you understand the point now so prophecy is what is telling you what god has perfected concerning your life it's revealing to you your jurisdiction is revealing to you things that god has said concerning what he has made available for you in the package of that fbi agent they are going to give him every information that is needed where he's going to sleep people he needs to call the numbers he needs to call no the, that scope of his work you are going to be here for six months and things like that they are going to give you every information that is, is that is needed for that particular assignment that is your prophecy but there are times in which you will need promises that will help you that will ascertain the reality of the prophecies but in receiving either your prophecy or promise you have nothing to do for god to do that for you they received it when they were circumcised i'm going somewhere and i need you to follow this but now for that prophecy to come to reality there are steps of faith it can only come to us through faith and that faith has system with which it works now let's go that's verse what i just read now you just read verse what verse 12 let's read verse verse 13 it said for the promise that it would be the heir of the world was not to abraham or to his seed through law but through righteousness or faith what is saying there let me read that preferred version verse 13 for the promise to abraham of his posterity that he should inherit the world did not come through observing the commands of of the law but through the righteousness of faith now what is saying there is this when the fulfillment of that promise came through eventually it did not come through by righteousness of law in other words it did not come through walking the works of law but it came through through the righteousness of faith which means walking the works of faith (laughs) 
what i want to achieve in this simple teaching tonight is to bring your attention to a bridge between the promise and the reality of your promise that is the simple thing i want to achieve at the end of the day promises have come prophecies have come but now we need the fulfillment of it what do we do if i let me tell you this one major passage that you must read through from now and as much as you can in the next year is romans chapter 4. if you get it now i'm going to be speaking in those directions as the lord will be leading us but that's how i want to achieve in this simple teaching what do you do he said the fulfillment of that promise promises coming through is not through the works of law the righteousness of law the righteousness of law is what is giving you rules and regulation no it is not by rules and regulation it is not because anywhere you see law it is doing something without allowing your consent about it that is law law is forcing you to do something either you understand why or you don't understand why that is law hello how many of us have been there before that your mom just said you must wash wash your mouth every morning and you just eat you just want to first of all eat before you wash your mouth but you are doing it out of you don't understand why it is just compulsory that's why you are doing it make your bed before you leave the house so what kind of what kind of law is this you are doing it not because you love to do it but because it is compulsory that is law god is saying my things what i ask you to do must not come out of compulsion the same thing now that they were forcing you to do you are doing it out of your own volition now you just love to do it just know it's part of your life can i have witness now now that is faith now. that is the work of faith work of law means the same thing but now before you used to do it because it is compulsory you are doing it because it is fearful if you don't do somebody's going to beat you that's why you are doing it that is why it's law but the same thing that you hate doing is the same thing you are doing now but now it's coming out of love <laughs> it's coming out of understanding that is the work of it so the fulfillment of your promiser the fulfillment of your prophecy man we be on understanding what we call the righteousness of faith the work of faith the system of faith how does it work the steps of faith so we saw from that verse 12 one more time that the bible talks about the steps of faith that our help that father Abraham took that is what he started explaining now so where do we start from one for you to walk the steps of faith you must resolve to the fact that faith is the fundamental key to obtaining the promise that is step number one you must resolve in your heart that it is of faith it is not by law to be of faith means that you you want to understand how god wants to do these things you want to know that what you are doing if you do it where god will come to for you that is what it means because if you look at verse 14 everybody let's look at verse 14 let's read verse 14 together he said for if they which are of law be his faith is made void and the promise made of non effect so you must understand that it must come by faith whoever that will come to him must know that he is and is a rewarder 
That is what faith does. Forget about people that must walk from morning to night and say that is how their promise will come true. You cannot give prophecy and make it true by yourself. It's not possible. Let me tell you a promise. Let me give you a definition of a promise. A promise is what you cannot make happen by yourself. That is a promise. <laughs> Shady, you hear what I just said now? A promise of God is what you cannot make happen by yourself. It's beyond you. <laughs> so when a man is saying, oh, I must work hard so that I can be this, I can be that, that is not promise. It's just his ambition. Nobody has a promise and you think it can come through by your own effort. So if I know I cannot get it done by myself, why would I not depend on the one that has given that promise? So I have to resolve in my mind that I'm going to walk that walk. Because if it is not of we, we have made, if it is by our works, what that verse 14 is saying is that we have made void the system of faith. And once we condemn the system of faith, that means that it is by faith this whole world is created. We are destroying the major force on which this world is standing. That's why we can say no to faith. So your promise, every, how many of us are, you, you, you have some promises in your life that you wish I can do something about it to let it happen. How many of us have heard that, that before? You have felt like that I wish I have the honor, the capacity of myself to get this thing done by myself. Or you have seen some people, they know they carry promise and in your heart you wish you can help them. How many of us have felt like that before? <laughs> that is promise. And if you have such with you, welcome to the world of faith. Welcome to the word of Hebrew. So resolve in your heart. It must be by faith. By it. Hallelujah. It must be by what? By faith. So you now need to relax yourself. I can't make it happen by myself. I must just trust this God. Number two. Understand that the language of faith is in past days. Now everybody, let's look at verse 16. Let's move therefore let's read together therefore it is of faith i want you to underline that in your bible if you carry new living translation the older version says therefore faith is the key that's what i just established one of the last time it is of faith that it might be by grace that means that if it is of grace and it's not of faith, then it's not of grace. <laughs> the dear word that you said now, if it is of grace but it is not by faith, it's not of grace. You can separate faith and grace. You can separate them. By faith, no have found grace. Is it your Bible? In Hebrews. So you can separate the two. So he said, faith is the key. Key to what? Key to the workings of grace in our lives. Is the faith. Now let's move on. He said, to the end that the promise might be sure to hold the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of faith of Abraham. What he's saying is this, everyone that is going to have it, either they are circumcised or not, they are going to have it. Now look at verse 17. He said, as it is written, I have done what? I have made you. Everybody say, I have made you. I have made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he believed, God who gives life to the dead and caused those things which do not exist as though they did. This is what that verse 17 is telling you if you are going to walk the walk of faith <laughs> it's saying to you that you must understand the language of faith and begin to speak that language so 
So this is what it means. You have an exam to, to write. And it said that you are the head and not the tail. That is the promise. If he has not said it, it will be in the, in the present future or continuous tense. But immediately he said it, it becomes a past tense. That's the language of faith. So start speaking the same language every day. He has made me to be the head and not the tail. He will not make me the head and not the tail. No, he has made me. That is the language of it. I have made you a father of many nations. Ever be even years after then, the reality, the substance are not there. But that does not change the authenticity of that word. Are you following me now? Is it, that's the language of it. So if you are speaking the language of it, start cultivating the habit of speaking what? It's in the past tense. Let me give you some of those language of it. Or those, some of those faith, I mean language of it. Georgie chapter 7 verse 9. I need you to write fast. Verse, verse 9, the Bible says, It happened on the same night that the Lord said to him, Arise, go down against the camp, for I have delivered it into your hand. He has not fought, but God said, I have delivered it. That is why you must go. If I say, I will do it, don't move. But if he said, I have delivered it, then you can move. This is what it means, man. If I say, Sherry, I want you to go to downtown to go and make a transaction. I say, how much, sir? Say it's ten thousand dollars. You will smile. Dad, I don't have that amount in my account. Is that what you're going to say? I say, okay, before you get to downtown, I'm going to put money into your account. If I built integrity with you long enough, you can move with that word that I will. But it will not be as strong in your heart as if I say that I have deposited ten thousand dollars to your account. So go. Do you understand the, the difference between the two? It, the only reason why you move with the first one when you say before you get there, I will, is because you trust my integrity and you trust the the seriousness and the accuracy of the system of bank transaction <laughs> do you understand you trust that there will not be power break out break out things like that but if i say that i have already deposited ten thousand to your account and to 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 act to max it out i say check your account while I'm talking, you could see a lot. What we have? Won't you go? And I didn't say ten thousand. I said okay, I'll put another two thousand for you to 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 to, 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 to take it. Are you following me now? That is the language of faith. And tonight, I need you to understand that God has not spoken His promise to you based on I will. He said I have. Because the devil's heart, I will, I will soon get there, is to let you think that the power of God is not strong enough for the fulfillment of his promise. His promise is not that I will give you a good job. I have given you a good job. Hello? But now where the work of faith comes in, we will soon get there. The real one is how you believe. Trust him enough that what he has said, he meant it. Because once you understand it's a past tense, it has nothing to do with do I trust him that what he has said? He said he has done it. 
and you could see the alert coming through. The alert is the word of God you have. So your home is that we, is this strong enough? Do you believe it's strong enough to work on it? That is how it works. That's how it works. One of the members sent, I mean, called me during the course of the week. There's a particular exam, I mean, there's a particular course she needed to know to know to, to register for as a, in a pursuit of our know, academic program. But because she didn't have another prerequisite, she didn't have that prerequisite, she was contemplating. Should I continue with this course or I shouldn't? Because I don't have this prerequisite. She just added, let me put in for the course. She put in for the course. She's, she's doing the course now. They are not hassling with that prerequisite. Do you understand what I'm saying now? That, that when your walls were to be built, he said, the decree shall be far removed from you. That is your promise. Is it strong enough for you to walk on? I, I'm not sure whether I'm communicating tonight. Can you believe that word enough that that word is enough for me to walk on? Or you just say, oh, since they have said it, there is nothing can be done. Maximum that will happen is that she put it for you that they say, okay, we have to withdraw that class. Is that not the maximum that we have? So it's the language of faith. Joshua chapter 6. He said, now, now Jericho, Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. Look at verse 2. And the Lord said to Joshua, see what I, what I have given. Did he say, did he say, I will give you? Say, I have given you. I have given you. I have given you your job. I have given you your child. I have given you your home. I have given you your business. I have given. I have given. I have given. Come on, am I talking to somebody here this night? I have given. That is what is in your Bible. But do we believe it long enough that I he has given? That is the step of faith. So when the Bible talks about walking in the step of Abrahamic faith, that is what we are talking about. This is what the, the Abraham understood. But will I believe him that what he meant it when he said it? Because let me tell you something. People will say God will not lie. If somebody said no, we know that means that he has a tendency to lie, but he will not. Can I have a witness? But even they say God cannot lie. What it means is that even if he wants to try it, he cannot do it's just not part of his. Do you understand? They have trained dog enough to do everything. You have never seen a dog that can use fork and knife. Because it is not his nature. God, we, God cannot lie because it's not in his nature. What it means is this. The day God just said, Oh, look at that two-headed dog. And he said, Oh, I'm joking. Immediately he said it. It happens. <laughs> Do you understand the point? Have you read Psalm, is it Psalm 35 now? When the Bible says that, when, the, when he spoke, New Living Translation says that when he spoke, the word began. He just spoke it, it happened. That is how strong his word is. That what he said, he, when he said, even if he did not mean it, he has already said it. Once he said it, it happens. So when he said that, look at your twin, 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 twin children. You, and you say, ah, do, God, do you mean it? No, if he don't do it, it doesn't mean it, that he has said it, that is it. Oh, but will you believe him long enough to activate the process and not to stop the process that is where the problem is that is where the fight of faith comes up because the step after God has spoken is that the devil is coming to challenge what God has said that is where the faith the, the fight of faith is 
So the reality is not about what God can do, it's about what you can believe in for. That is where the work of faith is. That is where we are in that continuous faith. We are in that continuous war. It's a war. It's a fight. So I can go on on because of I mean, you know, when I can give you like I have like 18, 18 different scriptures in that direction. But I hope you get that one. I have prepared it. Jesus, when he wanted to pray for, for Lazarus, he said, Father, that John chapter 11 verse 41. Say, Father, I thank you that you have had me. That is the way Nick, 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 Nick King James Version put it. You have had me. That is what he said. Isaiah chapter 42 verse 9. I say, I knew things I declare before they spring forth. I have told, I, I tell you of them before I tell you of them. Revelation chapter 21 verse 6. He said, and he said to me, it is done. God said, it is done. Isaiah chapter 16 verse 1. Arise, shine, for your light will come. Is that what is your Bible? So that is the language of faith. And if we are going to be the children of him indeed, he expects us to start speaking that same word. <laughs> Verse 17. I have made you a father of many nations in the presence of him whom he believed. God who gives life to the dead and calls. Did you see that? That's the next one. You must imbibe the God kind of faith. The God kind of faith is faith that speaks. It calls forth what is not. He calls forth what is not. He calls forth what is not. What is non-existence? He calls them forth to existence. Everybody, please look at me here. You will agree with me that this step is very simple to speak. How many of us understand it's very simple to speak? Talk to me. How many of us have you spoken today? Either in your thought or in your words. How many words have you spoken? When I, how many of us believe that we it's very difficult to speak this kind of word of faith? Can I have witness? How many of us have complained today? Either in your thought and in your heart. Can I answer? If you, if, you, if, if, you are, if you lie here today, I'm going to send you out of this auditorium. How many of you have complained in your thought or in your word? Can I see your answer? Well, how many of us have spoken according to what God has said today? Now, start doing it more than complaint. Do it consciously. Hello? Please understand this. The same word you're speaking out is like the same pill or medication that you are taking. Hello? How many of us will agree with me that we are more we, we, we are more uh, sincere or we 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 uh, we are prone to taking our medication. We are borrow me this English. We are we 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 religiously take our medication. We take it normally as we're supposed to. Much more than we are taking the word of God. Can I have witness in that? Uh, if you have people that they are having matters of life and death, you will understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm talking? If you have somebody that is asthmatic and you will know that person knows that if he misses one, ah uh, no. So if that person can be more, you know, that constant, 
in taking the word of God as well. How do you think our life is going to be? Because even God that has made the heavens and the earth, we still need to speak to call forth how much more we. So what it means is this, when I wake up in the morning, I have the responsibility to begin to speak. In the name of Jesus, I call forth my job. In the name of Jesus, wherever you hide, call you forth. But you know, at the time we get to the point when you say, ah, if I've been calling this thing for a long time, where it is? Can I have witness in the house? Have you all been there before? Come on, if you have not been there, leave this church now. <laughs> but now, this is the next thing. When you are like, so what is happening? Now look at verse 18. Are we enjoying this teaching tonight? Look at verse 18. Everybody, look at it. Look at it. Together, let's read together. Now look, they said, for he, he gives life, call for those things that do not exist as though they did. Look at verse 18. Who? Everybody, contrary to hope, in hope believed. Who, contrary to hope, in hope believed. Now, this one you might not understand it very well. Let's look at Amplified Version. You like that? What, which version is that? Amplified, right? Now, look at verse, what now? That verse 18. King James, is that the same thing? That was what King James put it as well. I like that. That who against hope. He did what? He believed in hope. Now, I need you to understand. Please look at the next point I wrote there. I say, understand that your faith is working against something. Faith is mounting prayer against something. against hope did what believed in hope that means that there is something that is against your hope in order to counter that thing that is against your hope you must release the force of it you know the point where you are like ah, i've been confessing this thing is not we are calling it for we don't even know whether you even we are even calling the right names or maybe it's death. Some of us, we've been there before. That is a hope that is against your hope that is coming. Up. And the only way you are going to counter that hope that is against your hope is to release the force of it against it. So the reason why you have resistance is that there are, there are things that are actually coming against you. If there is nothing that is coming against you, there will not be any reason why you'll be feeling the way you are feeling. Am I communicating? So it's a fight. It's a fight. There are forces there that want to make God a liar in your life. Okay? There are people that they know they know your God better than you do, but they want to force you to think that God is lesser than what you are thinking. Those are the that those are the hope against hope. So you must when, when I understand that I will know how to mourn prayer. Okay, let me give us this example. If by any reason I open the door. You know, maybe I'm just, you know, there's this way we can just unconsciously just open the door and it's not open. You try to hold it again. You see, oh, the key has already returned. So what is going on? You try to push it the first time. You know, the first time you push it, you are not mounting prayer because you are like, ah, there shouldn't be anything. More. But when you push it the second time, you discover you open a little bit, but the thing come back again. What will happen in your mind? Immediately you are going to change your, your, that. What? Somebody must be at the back that is not important. Now, are you still going to just do it like this? You will need to now, with your mindset now, there is something I need to work against that, that is resisting. Oh. So at that point now, you are changing your mindset, you are reinforcing now. <laughs> when you want to do this for very well, you will need to reinforce your faith. That's why we come to meetings like this. 
there is something that is against there is something that is just against believers there is something that is just against there is something that at every point in time you just need to so at the point where you have things that are against you like that look at this let's continue he said who against hope believed so that everybody look at what is happening here. so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken i want you to underline he became and i underline according to what was spoken what this scripture is he wants you to understand this then that means that we will need to change our mindset about what you are speaking of because the steps of faith is the one that says that you can only become what you are speaking he became not according to the promise as it were it's that he became according to what was what was spoken so start speaking what you want to become if i don't speak i cannot become but don't forget the reason why I want to stop speaking is that there are hope against hope. That we need to release the force of my belief every point in time to work against. So the more you have something that is working contrary to your hope, the more you know the reason why you have to speak. Because you can only become what you spoke. If you will become what you have spoken or what God has spoken, then you must know that there is a fight for you. Look at verse 19. He said, It did not weaken in faith when he considered the importance of his own body. No. If you look at that, you might be confused a little bit. If you look at Living Bible, you can help me put Living Bible. That would be fine. Let me see if I can put it. Look at Living Bible. Now it's so random. Because this, I will continue to teach on it because part and part of verse of us. Verse what? Romans chapter 4, verse what? Verse 19. And because his faith was strong, he didn't worry about the fact. I want you to underline that or write it beside your Bible. Worry about the fact. Worry about the fact. Now there is a difference between fact and truth. Fact is that I have a condition in my body. But the truth is that I am healed. The fact can be destroyed by truth. Fact is still valid until the truth shows up. Hear what I said? Fact remains valid until the truth shows up. So the step of faith is saying that I recognize there is a fact, but we don't worry about that fact. Instead, I will begin to speak the truth. Hello. Is it getting simpler, simpler by the day as I'm explaining this? So you have the capacity in your spirit, man, to start changing like that. I know, I know. I won't worry about the fact. I will counter the fact with the truth. Because fact is shakeable. Truth is unchangeable. So he said now, he did not worry about the fact but now if you're not going to worry about the fact look at what was what was written let's continue to read verse what now verse 19 being not being weak in faith he did not consider he did not worry about the fact that his body is getting weak now look at verse 20 he did not waver at the promise of god all of these are not dealing with them tonight 
please look at verse 20 21 where i'm going now verse 20 say it did not waver the promise of god through unbelief but it was strengthened in faith what does he do what did he do giving glory to god and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able to perform now, now look at the last verse i mean last thing that i'm as I'm rounding off give thanks because you are fully persuaded it did not worry but if you will not worry you must do something on faith to counter that worry what will you do give thanks but now your giving thanks must not be oh god you are good Oh God, you are good. And you are shedding tears. Oh God, you are good. Pastor says so. You are good. I knew you are good. No. no you will believe in me that it's a difference between when you are singing out of a persuasion and this time when you are singing out of God, I cannot blame you, but I know you are good. You know the difference between the two? God is saying, don't give me thanks out of let me cover your shame give me thanks because you are fully persuaded about that things you are giving me so when everything is getting down the more you are calling the more it's as if that thing is traveling to afghanistan the more you are calling that thing to come from it's as if you are is hearing go away from me i mean of course i've been there before that the more you expect that thing to you to you it's as if that thing is hearing please don't come to me now when you are in that that is hope that is against hope he said release your faith for it how do you release your faith start speaking but now while you are speaking facts begin to show up when facts are showing up he said know what don't worry how will you not worry he said give me thanks but that thanks must be out of a persuasion that he that that promised is able Let's rest to our feet. Hallelujah.